three, two, one. You ready? Listen to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Thank you so much for listening. We are the real pineapple. This is Hunter, and I'm here with Colin. Colin, how you doing, my friend? Very good. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm I'm curious to get your thoughts on what we're talking about. We're talking about Murder on the Orient Express, uh, directed by Kenneth Branagh, who's a hell of a. Uh, well, I pardon me. I don't want to get too uh, too complimentary immediately. Who knows? Maybe I didn't like this, but, uh, but <laughs> silly. I, I I know, but but. Um, it's interesting because I've seen some people um, say that they don't like it, and some people go, "Oh, this is like one of my favorite things." So I'm, I'm curious how how, how you felt about this. Uh, so you know, this is a remake as well, right? Yeah, from a '70s film of the same name, and they're all based off of a book. Yeah, which I saw the original years ago. I think I saw it when I was like, I think it was like one of my first classes in college. It's like a, like a intro to film class and i remember watching it in there and and really enjoying it too so it but it's been 12 years since i've seen it but i was really curious when they said that they're going to go ahead and you know do a remake uh remake of it and when they said hey kenneth brana who a lot of people probably know recently for directing thor was uh starring in and going ahead and directing i went okay i was like i'm i'm curious and the cast they have is fucking stacked. I mean, Kenneth Branagh, uh, Johnny Depp, uh, Daisy Ridley, Penelope Cruz, Judy Dench, Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, uh, Olaf, uh, <laughs> Willem Dafoe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's not the Josh Gad. Sally's not. It would have been great if it was just like someone in an Olaf costume instead of Josh Gad. That would have. <laughs> that that, that would have made it better for you. That that would have the biggest critique. It's the fact that no Olaf, but yeah, uh, but I gotta say, man, um, I enjoyed this. I thought this was a, I thought this was really great, actually. Uh, what were kind of your thoughts heading into this? Um, so I I, I believe I, I've seen maybe bits and pieces of the original. I know it's a, it's a bit of a classic, yeah. um, old seventies. And, and then I looked into like kind of the origin of, of all of this and, and, um, came to found that the, the character that Kenneth Branagh is, is portraying Hercule Poirot. He, he's, he's a big time, um, character in a lot of famous novels. Um, one of the most, uh, you know, first and foremost is the title of the same name, murder on the Orient Express. Um, so I haven't read anything. Um, it's, you know, it, 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 when you hear the name Hercule Perot, it doesn't stand out like a, like Sherlock Holmes, certainly not, of course, but it's, it's in the, in the terms of like, I, I feel like the, you know, community of, of, of books and novels, um, I think he has a pretty big following. Yeah. Um, so, so going into the movie, knowing all of that, obviously this is a remake of a movie, um, that was very it was held in high regards. Um, you, you know that can make you kind of worry a little bit um, how this is all going to go. Uh, but I do at the same time I love you know mysteries. I love this kind of like um, you know this detective type of movie that this movie was going to be like, kind of in the in the in terms of like a Sherlock Holmes, um, you know, with the, with with this great detective that can figure anything out. Um, so yeah, going into it, I was, I was pretty excited. Um, obviously, like you mentioned, the cast is stacked. I mean, when you look at it, I, I was almost worried that it was going to be like the, the, the big egos of all these actors may clash. I get that. Um, yeah, I was almost a little worried, like, especially with like, um, you know, Johnny Depp, like we, we haven't been the biggest Johnny Depp fans, <laughs> you know, in a while, you know, yeah. he's, he's done, he's done a few things. Um, that haven't been as bad as others. Um, but I mean, like people like Daisy Ridley, obviously, um, it's cool to see her in something besides Star Wars and, uh, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the other actors, Michelle Pfeiffer, all working together and uh, through the course of the movie, I thought they actually all played off of each other very well. No one was like trying to steal any scenes. If anything, Kenneth Branagh was very was very elegantly 
like just commanding the scene in every scene um and his portrayal like you know i i I wasn't necessarily like i don't have this image of what a hercule perot should be um you know i didn't rewatch the first movie at all or or, or, or use it as some kind of guide to see how this one would stack up. But his portrayal of this character, this great detective from Belgium, Hercule Perrault, I mean, I was, my eyes were glued to the screen. I mean, I, 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 I loved it with, with his big oversized mustache <laughs> so and, and his just like, <laughs> his, you know, I, I, I read and he's like a, he's a Belgian detective i almost thought it was you know he's speaking french a lot of the time so maybe i just don't know that much about belgium and and its culture and uh how how it relates to to how he he, his history but um man he was fun to watch i think the the biggest thing i took away was like i'm a i'm a big you know one kenneth brana fan but but his but the character of perot i mean detective perot dude he was he was fun to watch yeah, it, it really is Kenneth Branagh's movie. Like I said, I mean, he's a director on it, and he's the star of it. And I, when I saw those Kenneth Branagh, I went, okay, there, there's nothing, there's no way any of these people are going to outact Kenneth Branagh, nor should they, because he is the star here. And But everyone, though, plays off each other. I, I think it's a very interesting point you bring up about the egos, how it really felt like no one had one. It really felt like everyone said, hey, we're here to bring you know, this story to life, and everyone plays the role uh, really well. I really started, uh, you don't see a lot of him at the beginning, but the more he's in it, I really loved Willem Dafoe in this. I thought mm-hmm. he was fantastic, and I, I, I always love seeing Willem Dafoe. Uh, Johnny Depp, man, this is the first time in a few years I've been able to say, oh, wow, that's right, Johnny Depp can be good and shit. I mean, could you think about it? He's been that last stupid Pirates movie and Transcendence and Yoga Hosers. I mean, it has not been yeah. a great go <laughs> recently. The only a... thing I could think of with him that I liked recently was Black Mass and his his uh, of his portrayal of, of, of Whitey, the, the Irish gangster. I thought that was, like, decent. Wasn't that, like, almost three... Like, that wasn't, like, two, three years ago it was? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's been a little while. So it was actually... Sure. It was cool to see him in something where he didn't have like a, like some prosthetic on because that's the other thing. Johnny Depp loves his prosthetics, you know. He loves playing dress up, and so it was cool to actually see him just being, you know, like just himself really. And there's a scene with him, and uh, there's a scene uh, kind of early on with him and uh, 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 the main character. I, I'm gonna butcher his fucking name. Like they said like thirty times, and still couldn't. Uh, or, uh, or, uh, I think it's Urkelly. I think, or is that how they say it? Which guy are you talking about? Uh, Kenneth Branagh's character. I'm sure everyone like. Oh, for, uh, oh, Hercule Perot. I'm just the gonna detective? say Hercule. I'm just gonna say Hercule. Yeah, I think I'm, everybody calls him Perot. You know, yeah. but he's like the, de- de- the detective Perot. I'm just gonna but say yeah. It. The whole time when he was saying it, he was saying it with such th- this thick like french accent or belgium i don't know but like whatever it was it was like i never knew what his name was until afterwards and i was like oh okay so perot okay so i'm like <laughs> very confused yeah but but you, you know someone who's who's talked to a few uh you know european people in their time uh the accent being that hard to understand that's thing pretty authentic honestly so but you're right i mm-hmm. did need other people to go perot oh okay perot that's how you say it but there's a scene early on between uh, between uh, Perot and uh, Ratchet, played by Johnny Depp, and it's a really intense scene where Ratchet's basically saying, like, hey, you should work for me, you should be in my protection, and Perot basically saying, yeah, you're kind of a common criminal, and no, absolutely not, and it's, it's really interesting to watch, and the scene was actually pretty tense, all things considered, too, and, mm-hmm. and then that's where... Uh, from there, I mean, I, I, I'm i going to avoid spoilers here as much as possible, but um, through some events after that meeting, that's where this, the movie really kicks in the overdrive. And I will say, as someone who has mentioned multiple times that The Twilight Zone is one of its favorite TV shows of all time, I do love mysteries. I just love having my mind kind of fucked with. And 
when you get to the end of this movie, it is such a what? It's such, it's such a say what? At the very, <laughs> at the very end that... Couldn't say it better myself. Uh, they, they, thank you. Um, it, I, was, I was sitting there thinking, damn, what? And yeah, it was good. It, it's wonderful. It, it, and in the best way to mind fuck. And th- there are some people around me just kind of looking around at each other like, what the fuck is happening right now? Um, it's got also, also got some of the best camera work I've seen this year. There's a scene where uh, mm-hmm. um, Perot's initially um, getting onto the train and uh, and it, it's, it's shooting from the outside of the train so you can see his face like pass through like each panel as he winks his way to his room and the guy's like telling him like hey this is where you're gonna be i mean that was really well done uh when you find out about the initial murder uh they show everyone sitting in the like the common area and it passes like from side to side so people's reflections are hitting like the edge of the doors it's really well done it's beautifully shot um Especially the the fact that they're in a train the whole time, so you're you're very limited to what you can do, and they, like, like figuratively and literally shot, you know, like thought outside the box, you know, like, the, like the, the, when they dis- discover the murder on the train, you know, that the, the whole thing is shot from like bird's eye view, like top down, yeah, and not actually showing you the scene, you know, which, which is revealed to you later. Um, but it gives you that suspense, and I, I thought it was, I, I couldn't agree more. It was very clever in the way it shot a lot of this yeah i i i just i i really enjoyed the way it was shot and then you, you get to uh points where like people are running and they're shot outside the train i mean it goes outside the train only once or twice but it is it, it's really crazy how like Take how time. it's done <laughs> yes <Yeah, so, laughs> sorry as i yawn there it's, I, i'm very relaxed <laughs> but it's <laughs> But it's it's really well done the way it's shot. There's a scene where he takes a uh, Daisy Ridley's character, uh, Mary, outside, and he's questioning her, and just like little snowflakes falling. And I'm like, okay, this doesn't need to like be in 3D, but I it would it would be cool if I could like stick my tongue out and <laughs> and catch little snowflakes. Uh, it's it, I'm sitting here really thinking about it, and I think if there is a complaint for me at least. And it's not really for me. I think just people, some people in general, sometimes people really like their stuff spoon-fed. And the thing is, the movie does give you, you know, a little breadcrumb here, a little breadcrumb there. But I think that if you're one of those people who needs to just know everything and doesn't appreciate the journey, this movie will confuse you. But honestly, if that's the kind of, like, film viewer you are then I, I i don't i don't like you <laughs> because this movie like this movie does reward you for staying like staying in the flame with it and really just kind of you know like respecting uh the process of of it all it's really well done and like i said there's a lot that will confuse you at points but it's it's just it's 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 so good from uh from top to bottom especially this opening scene where he just basically calls this dude out up for stealing something, and it, it, it's it's a, it's a little slapsticky. It's a little Monty Python ish, but it serves to show uh, his intelligence, uh, uh, Perot, uh, Perot's intelligence. It's really well done, and yeah, man. I mean, kind of talk to me here. What else, like, what yeah, like and and it? It, in addition to, I mean, it when, when I saw that, I did get like that. Um, I did get that Sherlock Holmes vibe, um, which was kind of... I, I didn't know exactly what I was getting in, like, what I was sitting down to see when I saw it. And when I saw that, I was like, I was like, okay, this we're, we're focusing on, on um, you know, Perot. And it's going to be a movie essentially about him and, and his journey through this through this adventure and uh the way it starts off I, I i liked the way it started off a lot um in addition to him kind of solving this this uh this case relatively simply and and uh, you know sticking his cane in the wall and you know having him know he was going to run by and hit himself i mean obviously that's that's all you know movie magic type of things like probably none of that happens in real life but 
<laughs> but it's fun. <laughs> but but it's but it's fun to watch and just see this person that you know can can predict anyone's movements or 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 what they're gonna do given a certain situation because he is just like catching every single detail. Um, I thought I thought they did a beautiful job of really setting up his character. Um, the the way they have him measuring his eggs to make sure that they're just right. <laughs> so good. You know, that that just gives you that that example of of how he is just O C D to the next level, um, where he's he's seen everything. He he has a he has a great line too where someone's asking him, you know, how how are you this great detective? How you know, how how is this that you can you can do all of this? And he he says that he just sees every detail in the world um, you know, to such a fine detail that that every anomaly, every everything that's that isn't quite in place sticks out, you know, like a sore thumb to the point where it's it's his curse. But that curse leads him to be the, you know the best detective in the world. And I love that explanation. The way and he said it better than I just said it. That's he. It's all said in this elegant tone and and his in his accent that I thought is very very well delivered. Um, and yeah, it really like it from the get go. It really sets you up um, to be fascinated by this character. And like from the get go, I'm just like I'm ready to watch a movie where this dude's the focus. And I was really pleased to see that he was really um, the focus of this entire movie. It didn't jump from character to character. It didn't like give you too much time spent with people away from Perot. It really focused on his <clears throat> kind of journey through meeting everyone. And I don't I don't know if we had laid out exactly like how he comes to be on this train, but he he's he's friends with the conductor, and he he gets on this train last second, which um, you know not to spoil anything, but ends up um, being a big part of of the the case getting solved at the end of, of the fact that he was never you know supposed to be on that train to begin with. True. Um, so so as the murder happens. It happens despite the fact that like this greatest detective got onto the train. Um, so yeah, I, I I loved I loved watching the way it played out uh, through the through the experience of him. Um, one of one of my main concerns was kind of quieted, um, thinking that it was going to be split between Johnny Depp and then it's, we're going to go to this character and it's going to be this big ensemble cast thing and it really for the for the blockbuster cast that it had it really just had really really good direction and I and I give kudos to Kenneth Branagh for doing that you know that was probably hard to do to be like no we're not going to have everything focus on this character or this character we're going to we're going to keep it set on Perot and him solving this case you know and, and keeping the focus on him which which really made for a, a pleasant movie to watch what I will say about this movie that there are so many characters that but I thought the balance they struck is you know enough just enough about each character to care and with so many characters to be told honest, I think that's really all you can kind of ask for because I, I understand some people say oh this person's underdeveloped there's a person the thing is when it gets to the end and you find out just how the thing how everything breaks down it makes sense that they went the direction they did, so I wasn't upset. I went, you know what, okay, like for you know for this, that's about the only way you could kind of go with this. So um, that was and it was just it was it was fun. Like while they were like going over all these characters, like one of the like he's he's meeting some of the characters as he's getting on the train, and you're learning about the characters, but not until the murder happens on the train and he starts like really seeing everybody is not just passengers on a train, but suspects for a murder where he's really like looking into everybody who's lying to me. What, like what, what doesn't fit here? Every time someone's talking to him, what, what part of their story is standing out? Like, like I loved all that. Like that was fun. Like it was just all, all him interrogating everybody like person by person, um, it, it was fun to watch, and I like that. That's how they developed each character was through like interrogations. Once the murder had actually happened, yeah. I mean, I will say for me, and, and I really sat back and I, I thought about it, and I read a couple other reviews. And to be honest, I just didn't have any real major complaints with it. I, I just sat there the whole time. I was engaged the whole time. 
I was never bored during any of it. I was on the edge of my seat the whole time wondering who did it, who committed this crime. And um, I think, um, and now stick with me here, boys and girls. Uh, so if you guys have listened for a while, you know I'm a big fan of the Twilight Zone. I, I remember there was the episode of Twilight Zone uh, called To Serve Man. And you find out, you know, it's about these aliens who come down. They're like, oh, Earthlings, you're super chill. We got all this food, like Turkish delight, basically. And you should totally eat a bunch. And, you know, we we'll, we worship you. Da, da, da. And you come to find out that To Serve Man is a, is a cookbook. And it's about making us fat and farming us. And I remember as a kid being like, holy shit, what? And that just blowing my mind as a kid. When I got to the end of this movie, I forgot the ending. So I didn't know where they're going. So when I got to the end, it's it is just like as I mentioned earlier, it's say like, what? Like it's so insanely amazing when it gets to the end, and it does also set up in a way that they could go with the sequel route if they wanted. And honestly, I would love to see a sequel of this because I just love seeing Kinnabrana uh, as his character, and you yeah. learn and you learn more about him as a character as the movie goes on. Uh, well, they it. they also they also hinted um, at the end where they said that there was a murder at the Nile, um, the yeah. Nile River, and uh, I looked it up, and that's one of the other most famous novels, including Hercule Poirot, was mm. uh, was it's called like Murder on the Nile. So yeah, so if they wanted to go that route, they it looks like they definitely could uh, make a movie out of that novel as well. Well, I, I hope they do, because I, I enjoyed the hell of it. So, I mean, I'm going to save you for last year as I get to my uh, final thoughts here. I, I enjoyed the hell out of this, and this will be my top ten best of. Uh, I it, it may be low on the list. I mean, we still got six weeks, but I just enjoyed the hell out of this. I was so happy leaving that theater, and which is probably one reason why I hated Daddy's Home even more. It's because I got this really great movie and I have to go see fucking Daddy's Home too. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just so well done. Kenneth Branagh, I mean, starring and directing this. Kudos to you, kind sir. And I really, as you mentioned, uh, I think Daisy Ridley has a very bright future. And it was cool to see her in something that wasn't Star Wars. And, and... Her her accent, I was like, oh, English accent, so cute. Just, um, I really enjoyed seeing her, and Willem Dafoe was great. Uh, as I mentioned, Olaf did a really good job. Uh, again, not uh, he's not a snowman in it, sadly, but what are you gonna do? Um, <laughs> and yeah, good good to see Johnny Depp being in be Johnny Depp again, be that Johnny Depp that I remember. So I'm gonna give this a solid A. Um, I, I just I enjoyed the hell out of this. If uh, I I paid for this one and didn't pay for Daddy's Home too, I'm very happy paying the uh, ten twenty five I paid for this. So yeah, solid A for me. Uh, Colin, your final thoughts in your grade, sir? Yeah, um, I think I think that's 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 a good grade. I I, um, I thought it was really fun. Like the the most the biggest part, like while I was sitting there in the theater. Um, I couldn't even tell you how long it was. I don't know if it was like on the shorter end or if it was longer because it just the time flew by. I was just having such a good time, um, you know, watching the Detective Perot try and figure this out and and go from character to character. Um, I like like I mentioned before, I like that no one really kind of took over this film trying to do too much with it. Johnny Depp was you know played his part, but then he's you know he kind of bows out. Um, I, I, you know, if if I was to criticize anything, it would it'd probably be, um, like the, there, there's two key characters that kind of like pop up out of nowhere that I didn't really feel like I was aware that were even there. Um, I th- I think they're from like Hungary or, or for Yugoslavia. They oh, have like okay. They, yeah, they have like diplomatic immunity, and they they were actually like a very very important part to the overall thing. Um, and I, I, I think like they, they kind of came out of nowhere. Um, that that didn't necessarily hurt anything in the long run, but I wasn't even thinking about them for most of the the movie. Um, and then I felt like it was just like a plot point added on top that I didn't hear. And I don't know if maybe like the original or the or the novel maybe presented that better that people have an issue with. Um, but but I, I thought that was like a little bit like, oh, was, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, he hasn't actually talked to these people before. All of a sudden he's walking in their room. I was like, I feel like they would have been, you That's know, prime, prime, prime suspects, number one. 
Um, and then, uh, yeah, D- Josh Gad, <laughs> he's he's uh, he's he's funny. I, I thought the scene where he kind of starts crying and um, you mean I, I was, thing. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was a little taken out of of that scene. I was it's i was like i don't don't know what's going on here but um for the for the most part um everything was like really really fun to watch really um really entertaining detective story and um like you said you get a good payoff at the end i didn't think i was cheated out of anything you know obviously this is if if this is going the exact way as the novel it makes sense that this is a very very famous novel (laughs) because the it's it's a good story it's a good payoff at the end it's very you know very uh you know fun intellectual way for for everything to tie together um i i I think i would i think i would give it an a minus i think it's it's definitely um better than a b uh i thought it was really fun and uh i mean you you have you have some acting royalty in here you have judy dench you have you have you know obviously johnny depp and and some up-and-coming actors uh, and then Kenneth Branagh just kills it. I mean, he's the number one reason like this movie's an A, in in the A range for me. Like he obviously directed it, but like his portrayal of Perot is is awesome. And uh, you know everything kind of just like falls falls in line from there. So yeah, it's solid A minus for me. I think it you know it has a chance to make it on the list, maybe an honorable mention, something like that. But I really liked it. Really really good movie in a, in a you know in a time where we're not getting a lot of really really good movies. So True. so this one was this one was fun to watch. And honestly, that might be part of it, too, that we're, I mean, we're gearing up for that Oscar push, but, yeah, recently there just hasn't been anything that's been super, like, oh, my God, yeah, so. Yeah, and, the, we, and we've gotten a lot of big-budget kind of blockbuster-type movies where we've been watching, like, Geostorm and all this <laughs> other dog shit, and we're just like, man, like, it's fun to just see something where there's no one getting, you know, blown up or shot at, or, I mean, I mean, there's sh- shooting, but, I mean, like, you know what I mean, like, where it's not just, like, this big action scene where that's the crutch of the movie you know it's, yeah. this is all just flowing with dialogue and and you know it was it was nice change of pace good breath of fresh air you know i i was definitely very appreciative of that for murder on the orient express yeah no i i i agree and it was nice to see something that that it's it's a quieter movie and you do need to be paying attention to like i i don't think uh it, see this when you're wide awake because there's a lot of moving pieces but when those pieces come together at the end it, it's f- fucking awesome so uh guys let us know what you thought of this uh, of the remake here um i would be curious to get people's thoughts on the original too like how this you know kind of lands comparatively uh let us know in the comments below you can subscribe to us here on uh soundcloud you can subscribe to us as well on podbean and uh, itunes and google play at the real pineapple you can follow us here uh, on Twitter, or follow yours truly, pardon me, on the Twitter, at J Hunter Real Pineapple. Like us on Facebook at The Real Pineapple. You can follow our buddy Scott, we miss you, buddy, at Nearman the First. And you can follow Colin on the Twitter at The Real O'Neill. Guys, thank you so much for listening. We'll have reviews up this weekend for uh, We'll discuss the Vice Principal's finale, which I'm very curious <laughs> how that's going to do it. I'm so pumped for that tonight. Hell I, yeah. Hell like yeah. I, I don't I don't normally watch them live. Like I normally wait till it's over, but I'm yeah. gonna be watching that live. Dude, uh, me too. And we'll have reviews up as well for uh, Justice League and Stranger Things season two or Stranger Things two as they're calling it. And we will uh, I will have my first initial, initial thoughts on the Punisher because that comes out on Friday. So pumped, guys! Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>